Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. And uh, today I'm just going to be starting off talking again about the importance of natural immunity around COVID-19. It's such a big point that I think it can get overlooked. And I think part of the problem is, is that the public has been told that or they've given, given the impression that natural COVID immunity isn't so good. And so therefore you always need extra help in order to achieve better immunity. Now I'm from the perspective that you can't beat the um, body, the physiology of the body. And so therefore I don't think there's anything that can go beyond it. And so therefore if you have natural immunity, I think that this is something that can't be beaten. Now, before I start, so I'll be covering, it, it's a thought that was triggered by uh, this particular article about immune responses, why some people don't get COVID-19. And I'll be sharing with you as well this paper here. And this paper was from 2021, Epitope Profiling and looking at um, SARS-CoV-2 immune response to natural infection. So this is what I'll be doing shortly. But as usual, I have a few important updates before we get into it. Uh, the first thing is that we have now developed uh, our Vision Med newsletter. And this newsletter is different from my Substack, and so I still want you on both, but you, you can sign up for free, and the link is in the description. But you will see here, these are some of the studies or some of the articles that we're collating that are interesting. And you can see in the archive here, beautiful images. This is in collaboration with Lumientia, and they are so good at producing high quality content and imagery. Um, and so you can look through all of the archive at the, the link. And most importantly is that you would put your subscription, uh, your email there, so that you can join that newsletter um, for us and join that process. So um, this is an ongoing um, project, and we're trying to build our subscribers in a different way. And so join us with that as well. I'd encourage you, if you're not yet um, signed up to the pre-launch still of the COVID-19 Advanced 360, this is a one of a kind. This is like 44 modules, so it's a lot. Some of them are free, so if you're interested, you can take a look at it. And some of the earlier modules I usually present, but it's it's to put together almost all of what I think is important about COVID-19 in one comprehensive course. Um, it may seem like a lot, but I've broken them down into short segments. So they're not too long, five to 10 minutes, lots of images. And I've tried to tailor it so that it's not just for uh, scientific people, but anybody who wants to learn about COVID-19. So join us again, that link is in the description. So getting back to this issue about natural immunity, what really is it that I think is so important? You can see here this article. This was one of them that we put in our um, our newsletter. They did a study here, immune response study, um, to explain why some people don't get COVID. And as I've said before, so what they've done, I'll come back to what I said before, but the scientists in Cambridge and London have discovered novel immune responses that help explain how some individuals avoid getting COVID-19 and they were looking at single cell sequencing and so on. But what I usually say is that everybody has gotten COVID. It's just that there are a cohort of people who have no symptoms associated with it. And that's because they have such good mucosal immunity. That's why they haven't got COVID. And that's the bit that has been largely underestimated in the context of the pandemic. And I've I've got a few slides here from um, my my COVID three hundred and sixty, um, which is just helping you to understand a little bit more about what exactly occurs with natural immunity. Again, I show you here the viral structure, and this here is a virus. Um, this globe and the blue areas represent the spike protein. That's what it uses to enter the cells, 
and you can see these red and yellow orange dots on the surface of it. So the, um, the red dots are the membrane protein. This is the cut section. And the orange yellow dots are the envelope protein. And then inside this globe, you can see here, this is the RNA. And these blue dots are the nuclear capsid proteins. This is what helps to hold the RNA together. And so in terms of natural immunity, it doesn't just target the spike. It also targets the nuclear capsid, the membrane protein, the envelope protein, and so on. And this is what makes natural immunity much broader and therefore not as liable to be affected by variants as they come along. And this mucosal immune system is very sophisticated. This is what I have here as a, de a description of this immune defense. This here is the airway, the virus tries to penetrate, it infects these cells, and then it would try and break through this mucosal layer. This is a physical barrier because it has this mucus, uh, the ciliated um, the cilia on the surface of the cells, even when it infects the cells and tries to spread, it also tries to get into the systemic circulation to get into the lymph nodes. But then you have the immune defense there. And these are showing you all the different cells, the macrophages, the dendritic cells, the mast cells, the lymphocytes, the B cells producing antibodies. This is a very sophisticated layer to prevent infection. It's almost like your skin. Um, the skin is also uh, immune defense, but it's different from your mucosal defense. Each one has different characteristics, and this mucosal defense is exceptionally good at fighting against infection. So let me take you to the paper and what stood out to me about this paper. I wish I had found this earlier. So this paper was talking about epitope. These are pieces of proteins um, that can trigger. So in effect, if you think of the spike protein as a whole protein, it will have multiple epitopes on it, which would cause antibodies to bind to it. And this is something that is characteristic, again, of how the immune system works. So this epitope um, profiling was looking at how does the immune system, the natural immune system, respond to infection. And as I said, the paradigm is that, do you believe that we can develop a system that is more efficient than natural infection? So you have to remember vaccination is to try and stop or reduce infection. But the question is, is that if somebody already had an infection, can you supersede it? Can you can you vaccinate better than this natural infection? Now, I don't think that's possible. Some people think that's different. Some people think you can build it up with different strategies. I think if you have a normal, good immune system, the natural immunity is likely to be perfect. If, however, you have poor immunity, that's a bit different. But here is exactly what they showed. Now, this is very, very important. What they broke down here is that as I told you before about the envelope protein, the membrane protein, and so on, you can see here the response in terms of the height of the bar shows you in somebody who's got natural infection, how strong did the immune res um, system respond and how many points along the line had the response. And you can see here, the envelope protein didn't really cause much of a response. The membrane protein did cause a number of points, number of epitopes that caused some response. But look at this. This is the ORF3A. This is one of the big proteins that are produced after the virus infects the cell. And this one has one of the highest responses at this epitope on this protein. Six doesn't do much. Seven, a little bit. Eight, a little bit. Um, and then you have to look down, nuclear capsid has a strong response here. And look carefully at the spike protein in natural infection. It has a strong response, but only on two points. The rest are relatively minor. So when you add it together, what it seems to be is that in natural infection, 
and this is ORF1AB, another very important big protein. This is cleaved into multiple other proteins. Very strong response here, strong epitope here. So spike protein, the ORF1AB, the ORF3A, and the nucleocapsid are the main responders in terms of natural infection. So it's a very broad immune response. And I have to take you back to what happens in the context of an infection. And I'll show you this, this image just in a minute so that you understand why this is such an important point. When you have an infection, what you have to remember is that the cell becomes infected. Once the cell becomes infected, one of the most important aspects of the response is the T cells to target what we call virally infected cells. And these T cells will then kill the cell. So this is what it would look like. Let me just make sure you see this here. This is the, um, the impact of a virus. It gets into the cell. It starts replicating, not in the nucleus, forget that arrow here, but it starts to replicate and it's going to then produce lots of other viral particles. Now, the antibody response may not be able to get quickly to this particular cell, but once the cell starts to uncoat the virus and produce all the proteins, nucleocapsid protein, and so on, naturally, this is just part of the check and balances in the system of the cell, it puts on the surface any proteins that are being produced. What would then happen is that the T cells that are always surveilling what's going on would realize this cell is infected. It would immediately respond to it and then it would kill it. And you can see here, so this cell is not infected, this cell is not infected. The T cell, once it recognizes viruses in it, it kills it and therefore virus is unable to spread. This is the essence of what is really so valuable about natural immunity because the immune system is not just about antibodies. This is what people got confused about. These T cells, especially with viruses, because it will stop the production of virus by killing the cell itself. Very selective, very targeted. And when you go back to the image, you can see that all of these epitopes that I have highlighted here will have a T cell attached to it. So in terms of the T cells, you'd technically have four different T cells targeting these, another one, two, three, four targeting here, another one, two, three, four here. So you can see how many T cells, then this big one here is another important T cell response. You have two more here and another three more here. And so overall, this broad immune response, especially to these ORF3A and 1AB, proteins which don't mutate that's the important thing the spike protein mutates and it's almost as if the natural immune system recognizes that because you notice it doesn't go targeting lots of spike two or three areas the rest of it is targeting multiple other proteins in the virus and therefore it would fight the virus at multiple levels that's natural immunity and we mustn't forget that in the context of everybody trying to highlight their own perspectives, the ideologies around COVID. Don't forget at the end of the day, the immune system is extremely sophisticated. My big worry is that what has happened after we have done what would be immune refocusing, what could then happen, and this is what we're not sure of, once somebody has been spike targeted, where they start to get multiple responses to the spike protein, do they still get the same kind of response to ORF1AB, ORF3A, the membrane protein? Does this get suppressed? And this could explain why we continue to see the virus circulating, especially in highly vaccinated regions. Don't let anybody kid you. The virus is not circulating in places like Africa. It's done there. But even though they're trying not to measure it, it's still circulating very highly in lots of the parts of the first world. 
People don't want to acknowledge that because it damages a narrative, but that's the reality. And critically, we need to understand the mechanisms and try and find out how we'll be able to get around this problem in the long run. So thank you again for joining me. Remember that if you're interested, look out and join us on the Vision Med newsletter sign up. There are lots of um, things to see there as well, the COVID um, 360, if you're interested in learning more about it from this 44 module course and have a great evening and hopefully I'll be keeping you up to date on more important information soon. Thank you.